Ah, il est passé oh sur la oh super oh l'artiste Super oh Encore un but sensationnel Hello everyone, it's time for the final part of our EHF Euro 2022 preview. We did it all on Monday night in a three hour and a bit extravaganza and we've broken it up into more digestible parts for you over the course of these three podcasts. Now we go into groups E and F with two fantastic guests. I'm sure you'll agree as you hear them. Let's dive in. While we had that little break there with the video, I noticed that there are about 4,000 people watching. So clearly not all of you know who the hell we are. So I'm going to do a little reintroduction here and uh, and just tell you that if you want to hear from us every second day during HF Euro 2022, uh, you should subscribe to our podcast. It's the Uninformed Handball Hour. We'll be talking to experts like our next guest. We'll be talking to players and coaches and sometimes just talking shite among the three of us as well. And uh, it's a perfect segue into our next guest, Nedzad Smilagic. I hope I got that surname right. I've just realized I never had to say that out loud. So Nedzad, uh, first of all, very welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you very much. Surname was perfect. The uh, first name is Nedzad, but we will uh, we will catch catch up on that and maybe uh, next year in Budapest uh, or Cologne. So. <laughs> but surname, surname was perfect. <laughs> I was so I was so concentrated on getting the surname right that I I let Nedjad slip. So <laughs> that's oh, the good, problem. Oh, with I'm that. used to it. I'm used to it. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us, and uh, you'll be talking to us a lot about the the Bosnian team, of course. But we know you as somebody who can speak about pretty much anything in the handball world. So I think we'd like to start with uh, the team we just saw in that video. We saw Spain and their journey towards the goal two years ago. Uh, a lot of change. I think it's fair to say a generation change in the team after the Olympics this year. Uh, how do you see their makeup now coming into this month's tournament? Yeah, a lot of changes. It will be interesting to see how they will they will adapt. I mean, the defense remains strong, very, very, very strong, almost unbreakable, even though there's no Viran Moros left. I see in Miguel Sanchez, like uh, Viran Moros Jr., a similar style of play in the defense, not like a strong guy, but very highly intelligent as every single Spanish player. Uh, so defense will not be a problem. The goalkeepers will not be a problem for sure. The offense is something that could be problematic towards the, the semifinals, finals, because I see the Spaniards obviously in the semifinals, even though they are in the group with my country, with Bosnia. Yeah, we don't, we don't stand a chance. Uh, the, the attack will be problematic, especially because of three guys missing. First of all, Alex Tushabayev, the, the, the Mr. Clutch of handball, uh, the guy who takes over the games when, when, they, when they need it, but especially also because of Raul Entrerios and Dani Sarmiento. So this centre-back, the playmaker position, will be questionable. Uh, not Probably not against Bosnia and not against Czech Republic, but against top teams like, like Sweden, top teams like... Uh, Denmark and France and, and, and also Germany, even though, uh, as I heard, you guys don't consider Germany as a, as a particular good team, let's put it like that. So I think the, the biggest problem for the Spaniards will definitely be attack, maybe the lack of experience of, of a couple of players. But I assume if when the game uh, gets close from the 50 minute until the, so like in the last 10 minutes, you will see Canellas, Maqueda, you will not see the the new guys the new guys there on the court. So I think that that part of the experience will not be missed. Just maybe the lack of, yeah, the the guys the new guys are not so long with the team. So it will it will take a bit of time for them to to catch all of the all of the ways and all of the style of playing. So I, maybe I see the attack as an as an obstacle for for the goal. Yeah, I think a lot of people online were saying similar things, and I think. Um, the fact that he brought in Augustin Casado in from um, from Lirioca, who played an amazing season in the European League, he scored fifteen goals against Magdeburg and ten goals away to Magdeburg. So I think maybe that's maybe the solution, or do you think maybe that's maybe the solution that he's trying to find some firepower from an unknown quantity in someone like Casado? 
Yeah, definitely. I think Casado will be a factor factor X for, for, for this team. I must admit that I did not know who the guy is before he scored, I think, 16 goals in the European League. And then I was like, OK, hey, he's, he's also a dangerous Spaniard. Uh, it will be interesting how he will adapt because he's obviously a guy who, who likes to shoot. He's obviously a guy, I will not say that's, that he doesn't respect the tactics, but he's a guy who will shoot more often than Canelias or Makeda. So I'm interested to see how much freedom he will have in this team. And obviously playing in La Rioja is not the same as playing uh, with the Spanish national team. So I think his self-esteem will definitely be a bit shaken. So I, I'm just interested if he will like take the amount of shots that he's taken so far with La Rioja. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see how the, the new players fit into the Spanish squad, but they do have a lot of established names that can take on a lot of responsibility. They have their goalkeepers, which at the end of the day, they can always rely on. But maybe looking at the Bosnian team, and the, there may not be too many names that uh, are familiar to a lot of our listeners, maybe you can give us a, a little bit of an o- overview of where this Bosnian team is right now. Oh, that's a, that's a terribly good question. I mean, I'm uh, for, for a lot of people who don't know me, so I'm a best friends with the Buric brothers, so we grew up in the same city. We started playing handball together and... Yeah, I was lucky and honored to be the best man for, for Senem in Boric, which jersey you see so here behind me. Uh, so I spoke, with, I spoke with the guys this morning. They were extremely nervous before the, the 77 PCR tests that they did in the last 10 days. Uh, and as Vika said about Serbia, so Serbia had a good day with only one positive test. Bosnia had a slightly bad day with four positive tests so far. Uh, I don't want to say it out loud, but I will still say it. there are four players, obviously, but yeah, not like four key players. So that's at least a good thing. I'm very sorry about the guys that they will that they will not uh, be be there, probably not be there. But yeah, still the, the best news for the Bosnian team is that Benjamin Boric, the, the smiling killer from Flensburg, uh, is healthy. So I spoke with him every day. He was for the second time positive, but he didn't have any symptoms. He was just bored at his hotel room. Uh, but and he's a goalkeeper, so he. I, I'm not. I'm not scared about some kind of injuries or something like that. He doesn't run, so so that doesn't. It doesn't matter. He just needs to stop the balls. Uh, so Bosnian team is a. It can. It can have an impact. Uh, Nikola Perce, one of the most exper- the most experienced player, I think, in the tournament with 67 years or something like that, and and 25 clubs <laughs> which he played in in Europe. <laughs> said he, he gave it, he gave so it's a, first of all it's a farewell farewell tour for a three or four uh, Bosnian legends they are playing their last tournament they're, they're playing the last matches for the for the team like Nikola Perce like Mirsa Terzic that you guys know from West Prem and now from Wisla Plotsk it's an interesting team uh, it's a team that can surprise if they if they have a good day if if, if Benjamin Boric is stopping as he is stopping in, in Flensburg this year they can definitely surprise anyone they have huge respect towards Sweden. Uh, I will always almost say they, they are a bit scared of Sweden. Uh, so the players think that they can beat Czech Republic. I also think that they can beat Czech Republic, especially now where the, the arena will not be full. So it will only be two and two and a half thousand people. I expect a couple of Bosnian fans, also a couple of Czech fans. So there will be no home advantage for any, any team. And in that case, I think we can compete with Czech Republic. And then comes Spain. So Bosnia needs to have a perfect day. Every single player needs to have a perfect day. And Spain needs to have a shitey day, as you said, Chris. And, and, and they need, <laughs> I don't know what, what needs to happen. And maybe a couple of PCR tests going positive or something like that. Would be, would be experience. But yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting team to, to see. There are a couple of really interesting young players. Josip Veric, uh, for example, the centre-back from Eurofan Pelister. Is a is a very interesting uh, centre back. He's uh, even smaller than I am, so like one meter seventy four, five, something like that. Uh, extremely intelligent, extremely fast. Really, really interesting to watch. So yeah, watch the Bosnian team, support them. Uh, yeah, that that's the whole thing that I can say. I hope that we will win against Czech Republic. I hope that Sweden will go easy on us. And I hope the Spain will not not show up for the third game or something like that. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, it wouldn't be fair to have you on. Uh, and for those of you who are watching who, who may not know, Ned Judd is also um, an expert commentator on uh, Leola Eins in Austria uh, and worked with uh, works with Sport Radar based in Vienna. And so we'll ask you quickly about the Austrian team as well, as well as asking you for your predictions, your first, second and third place for the tournament as a whole and your MVP. And I'll give you 30 seconds to talk about Austria first. Uh, thank you for asking that. I don't know Alex personally, uh, but I was a bit offended when you underestimated Austria. So don't <laughs> underestimate Austria. They are, they are, the roster is full. Uh, Nikola Bilic is coming back from an injury. That's a fact. But they are dangerous. They are a really good team. So don't underestimate Austria. I think that they will surprise a lot of people. It's not only Nikola Bilic. Lukas Hutecek is a player that Europe will hear about in the, in the next couple of years. So I think you made a mistake when you underestimated Austria. I will just say that. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> and my, my predictions, uh, so gold, Denmark. Uh, silver, I will put Hungary for a lot of Hungarian people watching now on Twitch and also to gain some popularity on, 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 on me. Uh, third place, I will say Spain. Because, yeah, Spain is, is winning titles uh, as often as I'm changing my socks. So that's, yeah, I think they will, they will, they will have a bronze. MVP is for me Ben Sebanhidi, or it will be Ben Sebanhidi, one of the best line players currently in, in Europe. I like your choices. Very, very nice. So, Nechad, uh, it was a pleasure to have you on. Uh, thanks a lot for your insight. And, well, we're going to see a lot of each other as well over the next few weeks because you'll be working uh, on screen and behind the scenes, I believe. I don't know if we're allowed to reveal how much yet. But people on Twitch, you may see Ned's out on at some point over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, you get you get a couple of uh, days to to practice my my first name, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, can, don't you, can't you tell I'm saying it over and over again, Ned? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're getting you're getting better. You're getting better. I'm very happy. Yes, so. <laughs> thank you, thank you for thank, thank you, you for having me. All right, thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Beautiful and Chris, yeah, you better get that name down. <laughs> Time the, the clock is ticking. Nedjad. So look at, let's have a look at a bit of Spain. <laughs> All right, let's fly through the rest of this group then, huh? Yeah, let's have a look a bit at, at Spain. We have again a Galde here on the graphic. He actually didn't make the squad, but uh, we'll have him in there as maybe a Euro legend. Uh, so uh, good to see him. All the same. <laughs> um, but I, when I was picking out the key player, it's a little bit tricky. I think we, uh, of course, had to put. Paris de Vargas in as the the star of the show, I think, in for this for the Spanish national team. Everybody knows he is probably, I don't know, probably the best goalkeeper in the world at the moment. I think it's fair to say. And then after that, I found it very difficult to pick out who would put in the in the in the second and third position. I don't know if you guys agree with my my choices there. I think there's one player you left out, and that's no particular wonder because he's a new player in the squad, but it is new playmaker Tara Feta is I think one of the key players for Spain so Rivera has basically given the keys to the Spanish squad he said Tara Feta you are the player who's going to control this team and fully trusted him which is quite amazing from a player that basically I think we're just having some Technical difficulties at the moment. I see Alex and Chris are frozen in time here. So it's just me talking to you at the moment. We'll try and get them back on air as soon as possible. But yeah, as we were, as Alex was saying, there's some new people brought into this squad that uh, Jordi Rivera has put a lot of trust in. Um, I talked about uh, Augustine Casado before that he has been absolutely prolific for La Rioja uh, in the European League scored 69 goals so far so he's absolutely on fire there so he's one of the players which I think Jordi Rivera has put his trust into um, Antonio Garcia is another one brought back in he's obviously a Spanish handball legend at the age of 37 it was a bit of a surprise to some people to see him back in the squad once again so that's an interesting call up as well but the biggest loss I think for for Spain will be the absence of the two Dushabayev brothers. The creativity in attack will be where some people see 
that Spain might suffer because they are missing uh, Mr. Clutch himself, uh, Alex Tuchabayev. So defensively, looking very strong in attack, possibly where things may fall apart. Chris, you're back with me. I'm back. I I can't wait to listen back to this and hear what you've been talking about for the last three minutes or so. It's going to be amazing. (laughs) Are you sweating? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm cruising now at this stage. Okay, Okay, well, uh, I don't know what the what the the reasons behind it was, but everyone except for Brian cut out. So, but both Alex and I are back. So. Uh, bring us up to speed that <laughs> or ask us a question. Um, well, I, I, basically, <laughs> I basically summarized it with um, a lot is relying on these new people that they brought in. If they are going to shine and attack, the Spanish walls might not seem as big as people are making them out to be. But it's a big if question on, on the Spanish attack there. But maybe we'll move on to Sweden uh, for the moment. And we have our in-house Swedish expert, Chris O'Reilly. I reckon Sweden are going all the way to the silver medal this time i really yeah last year at the world championship they were the surprise package they had a bunch of young players which are really uh exciting to see and what was most exciting about them was not the fact that they were like the the biggest names on paper or like objectively the best players and they were just thrown into a squad glenn solberg the coach decided he wanted to play in a certain way and he brought in the players to do that. It wasn't about choosing the best players or the biggest names in the team. He came from the outside in Norwegian and decided he was going to do it his own way. And it worked. They went all the way to the the final of the World Championship. They had a bit of a setback then over the summer with the, the Olympics and the quarterfinal loss. But I really like the look of them. Uh, I saw a test match they played a couple of days ago against the Netherlands, which was in the end a fairly close victory. They won by four, but like with all these test matches, it was about playing players. Everyone in the squad got a run out. Uh, we got a look at some exciting new players in the team as well, and and that's surprising to say, considering as the the whole squad was young and surprising. Eric Johansson is one in particular. He's a left back and uh, age 21. He's played for Elverham this season and he has got an arm and a half on him. It's uh, it's really impressive to see. And him and Jonathan Carlsbergord are uh, two left backs who I think will, will do serious damage in this competition. And overall, they just have solid players. I think they, they've had, like everyone, uh, they've had some troubles with uh, COVID, particularly on the left wing where both Lucas Pellas and Hampus Vanna have uh, contracted COVID over the last week or so. Despite that, Yeri Tolbring still hasn't been called up to the team. <laughs> I don't know what is happening, but for some reason, Yeri Tolbring it seems to have been knocked down to like fifth on the pecking order there. Uh, but besides that, everywhere they have a couple of really good players to, to watch out for, like you have listed there, Felix Klor. Lucas Sandel just became a father, uh, so this could be the championship of his life. Who knows? Does, we saw that happen to Mikkel Hansen. Overall, I think they're going to win this group, and I think they're they're going to have a really good championship. I'm going to do you one better, Chris, and I have Sweden winning this championship. I think this team is something special, and the the thing that they have is squad depth. They really have one of the best backcourts in this championship, really on par with Denmark, which is really, you know, that is a statement in itself. That the players that were new a couple of years ago, the Felix Clares, the Sandells, the Carlsborg Gores, are established stars now. They, they, they're full of players who can just heat up, um, Throughout the team, including the man in this graphic, pa- Palika, who, while is not currently paying for a, a top club, he had to go back to Sweden and uh, try to get some match practice before his big move to PSG after being excommunicated from Reinek Leuven for reasons unknown. But he's a player we've seen rise to the very top. And I just, I just see it. I see it written in the stars 
that this is Sweden's championship. Not going to disagree with you there. Yeah, I mean, there's pl- plenty of... Until uh, I say Denmark are going to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read a stat somewhere on yourhandball.com that from the 18 players that lost the final in 2018, only seven of those players are in the current squad. So it really is a, a fresh uh, look and it has paid off dividends so far. So, yeah, be interested to see if, if Alex's dreams come true. Maybe we'll move, move now on to the Czech Republic, uh, probably people's third favorite in this group. They have changed coach recently they've moved away from the daniel kubas and jan flip co uh, team coaching team to radislav tritik who coached him back in 04 and 05 and he is now back in charge of this czech side chris do you see this this czech side we've seen them in euros of past causing trouble do you, do you see them causing trouble to anyone this time out no, I'm afraid not. Uh, I think the the days of them beating Denmark and, and finishing what was it sixth in the Euro in 2018 are are long gone. Just as I began to learn how to pronounce Andres Rahala, he he left us all. Uh, Czech Republic's famous guy who always seemed to be 36 years old. Uh, hey, Chris, how how about you give a go of uh, naming the top player that uh, Brian has mentioned there, the first player on the key player list. Jakob Rista. Tristka. Tristka? <laughs> hey, Tristka. Uh, that's, that's good enough for me. What about the third one? <laughs> Thomas Mirkva. They don't like vowels in Czech Republic. <laughs> Thomas Mirkva is actually moving to TV Kiel. So he has a big move coming up. So he's uh, maybe something to look out for. We'll, we'll have to be pronouncing his name very, very soon yeah. with his move to TV. But uh, to answer your question, no, I don't think they'll qualify. Okay. Alex, same opinion, or do you see any shocks in the books? This is one of the clearest groups. It is the clearest group in my mind. Spain, Sweden, all the way. But let's let's see our predictions. It's uh, going to make for some fascinating <laughs> predictions. Yes, let's move on to the predictions then. So I think maybe let's focus then firstly on the big game of this group. So we have Spain versus Sweden. Chris, you went for a one goal, two, sorry, two goal win for Sweden. I went for a two goal win for Spain. And Alex, you went for a one goal win for Sweden. So it's just me going for Spain. Yeah, I think. Why do you believe in Spain? Am I meant? Have I lost my mind? I, I think this is the year where we can say, okay, maybe let's rule out Spain from the medals. I know it's a uh, fool's gold and we've all been burnt for not respecting Spain's ability. You know, there's defense stays the same. It's going to be as great as often as ever. But they just don't have the firepower. And the, they don't have Dushbaev to save them in the last second. So if Alex Dushbaev was in this tournament, that scoreline would be reversed for me. And I'd have Spain getting a, a, a last minute winner to, to, be, to beat Sweden. But um, not the case this time around. Well, I've put all my eggs in one basket there as well, because I've put my special... Uh, what's it called again? The special bonus vote ball. onto the Spain Sweden game. My bonus ball, yeah. So I'm really, pu- I'm really banking on uh, if Spain doing the job against Sweden. Otherwise, I have some uh, some egg in my face. Chris, you went for Sweden Bosnia as your bonus ball. Why did you do that? Because it's a guarantee result, and I think I, I, are you misunderstanding the idea of a bonus ball here, Brian? You go for ones that you're certain are going to happen. Am I? Yeah, that's right. actually, yeah, what, what right. do you think I was saying? <laughs> not just because you're you're going for some pretty dodgy results but, you know, here. Why, why not? I think it's a good tactic. You go for differentiator games and then to double up that differentiation. Mm. You know, Brian's not in here to compete. He's in to win. Fair enough. I'm just here not to, uh, not to be last, basically. That's my aim at the moment. And if you don't know what we're talking about and you just joined, uh, we are predicting every single game in the preliminary round and we want you to do the same so go download the home of handball app and join our league which will be the uninformed handball hour league you can see there at the bottom of the screen uh, a link uh, which you can type into your browser to find that or you can type us in on the app and uh, also before we go on to our last group a couple of questions i see on the twitch chat first of all someone saying they didn't see the name hampus vanna 
as a key player. I think that might have been because uh, of Hampus being uh, under COVID at the moment and not certain whether he's going to play. But of course, he is a very important player. I think for Sweden, you could put maybe seven or eight guys in there. And someone asking, uh, Daudemir asking that, uh, thinking that Sandel was out. I believe Sandel has now rejoined the squad after his partner gave birth. So now that he's a new daddy, I think he's ready to jump back in. And uh, if that's the case, then Sweden are all the better for it. I think it's the last chance for people to also in the chat give their prediction for who they think is going to win the championship. So type that in. And if you do so, there's a chance that you could win a signed jersey from the team that you predict to win the championship. So with that all said, I'll hand it over to Brian again for Group F. Yes, we're moving now to Group F. It's going to be in Eastern Slovakia in Košice, in the Steel Arena. It's going to have Norway, Russia, Slovakia, the, the co-host, of course, of the Euro, and Lithuania back in the EHF Euro after a very, very long break. Just some initial reactions here, boys. What's your your gut feeling here? Is this is this a cakewalk for Norway? Yeah, probably is. <laughs> I think Norway will get an opportunity to rest a few players in this game. I think the Russia um shouldn't be sniffed at they they beat croatia in in the preliminary games i, I think russia have a few uh, kind of rising stars in that team and are are gathering a little bit of steam um pretend, a little bit like belarus a couple of years ago where there's something coming through when it's becoming a force again so maybe this could be a tournament for russia to surprise but i don't think they'll surprise norway no, let's now look at Norway's uh, route to the Euro with a nice little video. Big fight against Croatia. It was a fantastic handball game when I watched it after for, for neutral friends, uh, fans, but, but for us it was really hard to lose such a game. Uh, you go completely down. But uh, this time uh, Croatia were a bit uh, stronger than, than us. Uh, and maybe next time we'll be stronger than, than them. It was just uh, just so, such an em- empty feeling inside. So the next time I know I don't want this feeling again, so then we'll maybe uh, fight uh, even harder. Extremely proud of how the team reacted, how, how we, yeah, so fast needed to get back on the horse, if you can say it like that, and, and play play a big game the day after uh, against Slovenia. We really wanted something from this championship, so yeah, it was tough, but we we made at least a, a bronze medal. Bronze medalists at Euro 2020. It's Norway. We we enjoy it, but now we really want a gold medal. That's my dream. That's that's why I'm competing. That's why I'm playing. Uh, and to win something with the Norwegian national team jersey uh, is something I'm missing. <laughs> now, last two championships out in the quarterfinal was not that good, and we have higher ambitions. We have a great team and, and, and everything, but um, yeah, I think the whole group is really hungry for, for this gold medal. and. To be able to stand on the top, that's something we all dream about. An interesting look at the Norwegian team there and hearing from their experiences from a couple of years ago. We also had Sanders Augustson on the podcast a few days ago. And the uh, the impression I got from him is that the the expectation they're putting on themselves is not as strong as it was from the last few years and here to talk to us about that is a man who would know that very well i think it's fair to say it's uh, ole erevik who's a former goalkeeper and he was part of the norwegian team that made the big breakthrough back in 2016 when they made the ehf euro semi-finals and just looking at his cv here he's played for adamar leon magdeburg kolding alborg pauk in france geogee 
and now his uh, biggest contract yet. He's an expert on Norwegian TV at Viaplay. Ola, how are you? Hi, thanks, Chris. I'm uh, really, really good. Uh, looking forward to going to Slovakia in uh, a couple of uh, days. Uh, hopefully, all my last uh, COVID tests will uh, well, tests will also be uh, negative. So I'm. Uh, Locked and loaded and ready for a couple of weeks with a, with a fantastic handle. Yeah, I think that's the big thing we're all hoping for. Just negative tests all around so we can get into the countries. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a, an aspect of handball journalism nobody expected to deal with a couple of years ago. But uh, as we were saying there with um, our chat with Sander a couple of days ago, it seemed like the, the, the pressure internally is a bit less than before. Um, and also people's expectations around the handball community of this team is a bit less than it has been. But from the Norwegian side, how do you see it coming into this championship? Yeah, well, that's quite an accurate description, I would say, uh, uh, both from uh, from well, how I interpret the, the the answers from the players and the coaches. Um, I think they might they don't go into the tournament with such high ambitions as, as they have uh, done the last couple of uh, times. They have said uh, they wanted to play for the gold medal. I'm not sure, so sure if they are saying the same thing uh, right now. And also, as you say. The surroundings said uh, they don't have uh, the same expectations uh, either and uh, the reasons for that are good i think uh, seeing norway for the last uh, couple of years maybe after the Euro- uh, european championships in uh, sweden and norway two years ago where i think you know it was uh, the best team uh, without a doubt uh, unlucky in the in the semi-final in, against croatia that was the championship uh, we should have uh, won uh, we didn't. We got the bronze medal, and since that, I don't see the same progression in the in the team as uh, in the years before 2020. Things can change. Uh, luckily, uh, so to say, we are in a pretty easy, comfortable uh, group that could get Norway into some kind of uh, of running. But the the form the last uh, couple of months has been poor, uh, and uh, I'm really, really exciting, excited to see how how uh, the players and how the team will react now going into the championship uh, with uh, with some uh, yeah anxiety i would uh, i would say so you said there that this norway team don't seem to be m- making the same progress as in past years what are you seeing that's different on the handball court to norway of maybe 2 years ago well first of all uh, maybe the thing that has been mostly talked about uh, when when talking about the norway that's been the the, the, the fast playing, the counter attacks, uh, the fast breaks and everything. I, I think we lack a little bit of, uh, of, uh, pace right now. I don't think we're playing with a, with the same energy, with the same speed as we have done, uh, for the recent championships. Uh, I watched, uh, the match against Denmark, uh, two uh, days ago. And, and I also think that the Denmark is at another level than Norway. On, uh, when talking about the uh, counterattacks, when talking about, uh, fast breaks and, and speed, putting speed into the game, which has been, uh, the first and foremost, uh, thing that, that Norway has been uh, known for and that Norway has, has won so many games that I have, uh, during the last couple of years and, and all, always been playing, uh, Around the, the semifinals in almost every championships they've been playing, uh, the last, uh, well, what is that? Uh, five, five, six years, five years, four, 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 five years. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting because, um, kind of a few years ago, the, the speed came a lot from Sagason because he played defense and could make that transition. And Norway have kind of gone away from that potentially because when Sagason gets, plays defense he gets one two minutes then he might get a second and then we've seen him getting a red card before um but let's see maybe they they will go back to that but the question i want to ask is more about players who are not there so there's two key players in the past few years in magnus fluid and um goran sugar who will not be uh with the team this year who do you think is there in the team to kind of step in and take their place well, uh, first of all, uh, missing uh, both uh, Magnus Rød and uh, Johan Johansson, that's uh, quite a blow for Norway. I mean, uh, Magnus Rød is uh, maybe uh, one of the, if not the best, but at least uh, one of the best uh, right-backs in the world. Uh, he's fantastic defensively. 
he's great offensively and and he has this uh uh power in uh, in his uh counter attacking uh coming with great power uh he's extremely tall he's uh Extremely good shooter, uh, and also Jan Johansson has also, is also a man uh, putting some kind of speed into the game. Uh, at that position, you have uh, Cristiano Sullivan, who who is also known for this. Uh, he has uh, some great vision. He he plays uh, defense, and he uh, is the man uh, you have to get the uh, get the ball to when uh, winning the ball defensively to to put some pressure on the opponent uh, in the in the game or in the play going forward uh, i think uh, christian O'Sullivan is going to be vital if norway is to to play with some kind of speed and that speed that norway has been known for for the last couple of years and from a, a non-norwegian perspective i think one name that has has been on a lot of people's lips particularly because he wasn't involved in the national team the last few months and not here for this month as well as to be as grundall who was really impressive for Elverum this season. Uh, there seems to be a bit of like a mystery shrouding this one. I don't know if you can shed any light for us. Well, to be honest, that's also a mystery for for me. Uh, I don't see why uh, Tobias Grandal is is not in the rooster. Is at least the the twenty five man uh, rooster. I can't see that uh, there are thirty five uh, players in Norway uh, being better than uh, Tobias uh, Grandal. Uh, also, uh, Grandal uh, or John Johansson, it was known for the for the coaches and for the staff that that he was uncertain when uh, picking uh, the squad, picking the roster. So, so to me, that's uh, that's quite a mystery as well that uh, Grandal is not uh, is not there. And I think actually that uh, Tobias Grandal also could be a some kind of a solution in this uh, championships, even though he has uh, not played uh, one before and. Uh, you, you, it's it's very seldom, seldom or rarely that you can expect uh, a, a newcomer being quite uh, or being decisive in 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 such a way that, that that winning a medal or not that that's maybe not the pressure that you can expect to put on a on a newcomer. But 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 to, to me as well, to be as well, should be there, and I don't understand why it's not. Talk to us a little bit about Christian Berge, and I mean he's been the mastermind behind Norway's journey from. From being a team quite on the outside to an absolute title contender for the last few tournaments, where is he now in his in his coaching, let's say, cycle with Norway? Do you think? Do you see him staying in the job for 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 years to come, or do you think he's maybe coming to the end and maybe it's time for someone fresh? Uh, well, uh, first of all, Christian Berge has done and is doing a fantastic job with the Norwegian team. Uh, I think. Uh, the progression that we've uh, made during the last uh, uh, yeah, five, six, eight years, that's it's tremendous. Uh, it's something that I, if you had asked me in 2015, if I uh, thought that Norway were go- was going to be a, a contender for the medals in every championship they played, I would say you're crazy. Uh, so he has done a fantastic job and he's doing a fantastic job. Then you're also asking if he's uh, there f- to stay for many more years or many years to come. I'm not that sure. Um, there are rumors about uh, Christian Berg uh, taking a job in uh, the Norwegian uh, side, Kolsta, which uh, also have uh, signed uh, Sander Sargussen. And uh, even though it's uh, rumors, uh, yeah, uh, where there is smoke, there are also very often uh, fire. Um, so I'm not sure if Christian Berg is uh, staying uh, for uh, many more championships. Uh, I'm not surprised if this is his last. Uh, let's uh, keep it or uh, stay with that. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Thanks a lot, Ola. We're looking forward to watching Norway in this tournament. I think they, they are still a very exciting team. But before you go, we will ask you your predictions for the tournament. So your gold, silver, bronze and your MVP. Well, uh, my gold medal, uh, it's easy. Uh, I mean, uh, Denmark, they could have uh, played with uh, two teams from their uh, roster now, and uh, both teams would have been fighting for a uh, semifinal uh, position. Uh, Denmark uh, should win uh, and will win, I think. Um, then I think uh, I'm going uh, to be a little bit maybe, uh, I don't know if it's a huge surprise, but I would say uh, Hungary. I was a Hungary going for the silver medal. Um, and then 
Sweden will get a bronze medal. MVP, uh, MVP, Benze Bahidi. Ah, okay. Not the first one to go for Benze. A lot of love coming in really? from Hungary. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, you're not alone there. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, Ole Erevik, thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, yeah, hope for those final negative tests. And uh, we'll see you at the championship. Take care. Thanks for having me. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other in a couple of days. So very interesting stuff there from Ole Erevik. And boys, it is it fair to say that maybe this group is, is the most clear cut of all the groups in terms of the placement from one to four? Well, shall we find out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we through the, uh, with our predictions, I can't, who's in the group again? Uh, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's Shots Norway and, and everyone else. else. We've been we've been doing this for three hours now. <laughs> this this group: <laughs> Norway, Russia, Slovakia, Lithuania. I don't think so. I don't think so. I I have a feeling. You know, we're not giving enough love to the other hosts here. There's a lot of love coming in for Hungary in this three hour show but not enough or not any love coming in for slovakia and i think it was bjorn patson who's going to be writing for the ehf for this championship who predicted slovakia to be his fairy tale story a fairy tale for them would be winning a couple of matches and going through to the main round and i think they might have a chance to do that at home uh, against lithuania and against the the Russians, but you know I don't with, with a ravenous twenty five percent crowd. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, the, the boisterous, <laughs> you know, two thousand <laughs> one thousand people that are allowed in the arena will will carry the Slovakian team. Be- beggars can't be choosers. For the last couple of years we've had, I'll, I'll take two and a half thousand people over over nothing. But um, you know, I think I think to get a full understanding of it, I think I need to learn a bit more about the Lithuanian team. And I think Brian, you can help us out there. Can I? Oh, thanks, Chris, for putting me under pressure. But I think the Lithuanian team, <laughs> they they are missing their their star. Um, their t- so Truk Tr- who uh, plays who played his handball in Montpellier, and they won their. Uh, they won the Champions League with them. Um, he won't be playing. Obviously, he he went on, underwent knee surgery, so that he is their their star man. So that is probably that's a that's a massive loss for them. a team like that who doesn't have a whole lot of experience playing at even in Champions League or European League. So to to miss a, a guy who won the Champions League only two seasons ago is is a huge loss for them. To you be know. fair, M- Malasinskas is a. A real star. He is the reason why you're such a passionate Motor Zaporozhye fan, Brian. He drives that team forward. So I think we could also do that with Lithuania. It could do. Could, I mean, I would have been happy to see them together. I think they, you know, they, they've done a huge amount, Malasinskas and Trukanovicius, uh, for Lithuanian handball. And to see that Instagram post from a few days ago from Jonas Trukanovicius saying that he's just had knee surgery was kind of heartbreaking. Uh, for them but you know besides that they're, they're not newcomers they've had um they've had a couple of uh championships before one in the euro one in the world championship but none of these players have experienced that so i think they're just gonna hopefully enjoy it as much as possible and uh for them they'll probably be looking at that slovakia game as a chance to to get a victory yeah, I mean they've only won one ever, one game ever at a Euro that was back in 1998 over Italy. So every single game they're going to play at this year will be like a cup final, and I'd I'd agree with you that Slovakia game will be the one that they're, they're probably eyeing up to, to think well maybe we can we can snatch something here. But let's maybe move then to uh, Russia, um, a team which maybe Alex could give us some insight into, a team that's kind of been in in a bit of a rut the last few years and maybe recently trying to revamp themselves what what do you see out of this russian side uh alex this time out i think they're doing a good job of revamping themselves and it's interesting that with key players you you've picked three from the old generation these are you know the the well-known players that are you know that have been with Russia through their lows, I would say, but have stood out during those times. I think the new generation that's coming in with Kasarotov, Santalov, 
and uh, Kiev, um, sorry, Kiselev, are real good players. They, you know, Kasaratov is seen as one of the biggest future stars in in world handball. He's only 22 years old. He broke out um, in the last European Championship, followed up with a good world championship. And I think, you know, he, he's ready to become a big name. So I see Russia in this group as uh, very clear favorites for, for that second spot. Um, I, I wouldn't us- underestimate them. And I think there's some great players to watch out for. Yeah, Kosorotov is a is an interesting guy, that's for sure. And a lot of them played with uh, CSKA Moscow in the last couple of seasons. Who uh, we've seen them in the European League and have been uh, like a surprisingly bright spark in that competition. Yeah, definitely. And that's um, Kiselev no, is their it. kind of go to guy. So definitely watch out for Kiselev. I think we didn't look at the Slovakia graphic just yet, so maybe we'll put that up on the screen now. Of course, co-hosts uh, of the Euro kind of expect some home support of course it's probably worth going into their journey to the european championship i'm very excited i'm very satisfied with the championship is in slovakia it was my dream uh, play from slovakia and uh, play the championship It will be my first championship, so for me it's very special one and it's double special when we play now in Slovakia. It's a really big competition for our maybe new team because we play like with uh, new players, the old generation is not, is not here. In the Euro Championship, it's every, every team is very, very good, so we will play against Norway, one of the best team in the world, so uh, it's not an uh, easy match. First of all, we we need to let on the player everything what is in us. Maybe this is our opportunity and uh, who, who knows, maybe for somebody of us it's last. Because uh, we didn't qualify the last few times, maybe maybe we must qualify, who knows. So we let there everything that I can promise to pass to, to everybody that we will play 100, 120%. We, we need to beat minimum two teams and we will do everything for it. It's a big step for Slovakia handball, for Slovakia people, and I hope that uh, people come to, uh, to the hall. I really hope that uh, spectators can come. Uh, we missed the championships the uh, last 10 years, so they couldn't see uh, some big competitions of handball, or they could see but without us. So I hope that, uh, that they will come and uh, they will be our seventh or eighth players. So there you have it. It's going to be a huge few days for Slovakia as they host the Euro for the first time, of course, with Hungary as co-hosts. Um, Peter Kukushka, who spoke there, the, the trainer, has probably one of the best names in handball, but uh, he has a huge task at hand. And probably, as you said, Chris, their cup final will probably be the Lithuania match, having they've lost uh, eight of the last nine matches at the last three Euros that they have played at. So any win will be a big, huge achievement for them. Yeah, and you know they. You, you might joke, "Who are these people?" Uh, you know, I happen to work alongside a guy in the EHF media department for five years, Vlado Brinjak, who is a Slovakian and may be the only Slovakian handball fan in the world. Who knows? We'll find out in the arenas over the next few days. But uh, thanks to him, I, I got to to have an overview of the players and, and you know they have a soft spot in my handball heart and you look at the key players there uh, Thomas Urban and uh, Oliver Rabek who have Champions League experience with uh, Tatran Preshov who uh, were once upon a time not a bad team at all and Igor Chupria, uh, Chupnura, <laughs> Igor Chuprina I don't know why I tried too hard there. I went in, went in too early. Uh, Igor Chaprina, who uh, is a, a fantastic goalkeeper. I think he, uh, at every every time they play a Euro qualifier 
or world championship qualifier some of his saves pop up in like uh, the highlights and social media because he is he's a wonderful goalkeeper and you you put it there and you're watch out for his spectacular saves so yeah i think they'll get a victory here i'm not now that we've spoken about russia i'm not feeling so confident anymore i can't remember which predictions i made so maybe we should find out absolutely so our final bunch of predictions for today and we also have three bonus balls uh, that were tied in there. I have gone for Russia, their three goal win over, or sorry, I've gone for Norway's three, three goal win over Russia. Alex and Chris, you've both gone for Lithuania, uh, Norway as your bonus balls. So you're sure that Norway are going to pick up an absolutely massive win there. Yeah, and both both going for 11 goal victories, which is interesting, uh, to be honest as well. Uh, but the re- my thinking behind that is Lithuania at the end, like the final game, they're going to be absolutely bollocks and just can't do it anymore. And Norway will be uh, letting the youngsters loose uh, and will will score a big victory there. So Slovakia, I so said the Russia-Lithuania game, I did go for a Russia win there. Slovakia again. Oh, see, I went for Slovakia to beat Russia. Not, not so sure about that anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, home court advantage. Yeah, that's um, that couldn't do anything. Alex, for for a man who, who for a man who loves hot takes, you've been very very uh, calm and controlled with your with your predictions this time out. I think I, I, I've, I did go a bit safe with a lot of draws. <laughs> That's probably been uh, my downfall here. But I think my hottest take is still Sweden to win it all. Uh, so saving uh, it for we, that. Yeah. Shall, shall, shall we go into that then? Our, our top three and our MVP each. Because we've asked all of our guests. Uh, and the vast majority of them have gone for Denmark. And uh, let's see what we think. I think we'll start with Alex saying is the, the winner is not a surprise anymore. So for me, um, I am going with Sweden as champions, uh, as I said. And I also have Hungary in the final. What I see happening is Hungary and Denmark playing in the semifinal. And I'm not even 100% sure if that is possible. Uh, but Hungary playing Denmark in the semi-final and the Hungarian support being too much and overwhelming this uh, Danish team to to get Hungary to the I'll final, stop. but then in the end, <laughs> you, I'll stop you there. It's not. Po- I, I'll stop you there. It's not. Possible. It's not possible. <laughs> okay, they're gonna they're gonna have to face off in the final and in the main. They're gonna be in the final. Oh, should should have thought this through a bit more. Um, anyone else want to go while I while I figure out the, the main round groups? <laughs> yeah, I had to think about this already. So I had Hungary to win bronze, beating Norway in the bronze medal match, and Denmark to beat Sweden in the final. So Hungary bronze, Sweden silver, Denmark gold. MVP Magnus Saustrup. Tempo. Good. I think, yeah, I haven't thought about it properly either, so this might not be possible, but uh, I'm going for Denmark first. <laughs> Chris can tell me if it actually works or not. Denmark first. Denmark <laughs> Hungary second. Technically Sweden win third. the competition. <laughs> Everything's possible from here on out, no? Uh, Denmark, Hungary, Sweden. Is that possible, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. And MVP. MVP. I think I actually will go for Benson Benhidi. I, I thought of that beforehand, actually. So I'll I'll follow that trend. Okay. I, I've I've cali- recalibrated a little bit, so I've got mine. So I have a final between Sweden and <laughs> Hungary. Yes, I have a final between Sweden and Hungary. Uh, no, wait. Hold on. Where's Denmark? This is this is great radio. <laughs> Denmark, no, no, Denmark. Denmark finished third place um, after losing to Sweden in the semi-final. Mm-hmm. There's the okay. so then we have Denmark first, Hungary second, and um, Denmark finishing third, beating Norway in the third place 
playoff because that's possible. <laughs> and my MVP is going to be Palika with just, a Cinderella just, story. Just to clarify, you mean Sweden to win gold. I think you said Denmark again. I think uh, it's just Denmark slipping into gold uh, uh, position, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah. Denmark getting their bronze. Sweden get the gold. Hungary are so happy with their silver medal. Nice. Okay. And uh, we did promise that we would give out a prize and we have a winner. It's been chosen behind the scenes and the user Radus Utz. So R-A-D-U-S-O-O-T-Z. You're the winner. And you predicted Norway to win gold, which means you're going to get a signed jersey from Norway, which is a pretty sweet uh, prize, I think it's fair to say. And uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot more of that to come on Twitch over the next couple of weeks for EHF Euro 2022. I'll give you another shout out as well, just before we go off that. Uh, the uh, Now you can predict uh, all of these games, which we've tried to do over the last three hours. You've heard the experts. You've also heard us. Now you have to decide which one is right or just ignore all of them and go for your own predictions which is probably not a bad idea at this point so what you have to do is go onto the home of handball app or download it if you don't have it already and update it to euro mode and there you can find the predictor and you have a chance to win Garenia fridges where we all love Garenia fridges and ehf euro 2024 tickets which will be to the opening game of the championship in germany which will be an attempt for a world record of attendance which will be at a football arena i think in dusseldorf if i'm not mistaken and so they have some pretty sweet prizes to play for and you have to beat us to get to them though and uh, i think all we can do for now is also to remind you so many things to remind you that we will have edited podcasts every couple of days so you won't have to listen to us do this live, but you can listen to the smooth edited version every two days during the championship where we'll be speaking to players on the ground in Hungary and Slovakia. And uh, we'll all be gathering in Budapest in a couple of weeks time. We're going to have a blast and uh, I hope you'll join us for the ride. So thank you to all of the guests who joined us for the last few hours. Thank you to Brian Campion and Alex Kulesh and also Big shout out to Clements, who's working behind the scenes and has been dealing with all of the... I think he's sweated more than anyone else with all the technical issues in the, the hotel in Budapest. We'll make sure to get a better Wi-Fi connection for the next one, that's for sure. And uh, either, either way, thank you, Clements, for sorting it out. Uh, we got there in the end. And thank you for everyone who watched. And you'll, you'll hear from us again in a couple of days' time. Until then, take care and good night. Good night.